Hey viewers, one of the things I've been asked the most for is a video on how to convert a vintage mountain bike to disc brakes, and that is what I'm going to do today. Now there are no mounts on this bike for calipers on the front or the back, so I'm going to have to use adapters. There's not a one-size-fits-all solution to mounting disc brake calipers on a bike that doesn't have the mounts for them. Uh, so I have a variety of adapters here to play with, and I'm sure there's going to be some trial and error uh, to get them to work. So I'm going to start off by removing these wheels here. And then remove the existing brakes. Just go ahead and cut these cables here. And five millimeter Allen uh, socket here. And the front one. Now the wheels that were on your mountain bike, they're not going to work. Uh, they don't have anywhere to mount the rotors for your disc brakes. You're going to need a pair of wheels with hubs designed to mount disc brake rotors. This style here, the rotors bolt onto the hub. There's another style from Shimano where the rotors are held on by a lock ring. It really doesn't matter which style you use, either will work. Now, I've had some people in the past ask me, can't you just replace the hub? Well, sure, but generally by the time you replace the hub and have the wheel rebuilt, uh, it's just easier and cheaper just to replace the wheels. Now the front wheels should go on with no problem. I still need to mount the rotors, but I'll do that later. So I'm just going to stick this on for right now. Now one problem that you might encounter is the hub spacing. On the older mountain bikes, the hub spacing was generally 130 millimeters. So 130 millimeters between the dropouts and the hub was 130 millimeters wide. It slid right in. But the wheels that have uh, mounts for disc brake rotors are newer, and the newer spacing is 135 millimeters. So those newer wheels are not going to fit in the 130 millimeter spacing. Um, now I lucked out here, and this uh, hub spacing here is 135 millimeters already, so it, this frame must be slightly newer, so I don't have to do, deal with it. I'm not going to have any problem. But on the older frames where the, the spacing is 130 millimeters, if it's a steel frame, what you can do is do something called cold setting in which you expand the rear triangle out to 135 millimeters so that that wheel will fit in. And I have a video on that and I'll include a link in the description. If it's a steel frame, you can do that. If it's an aluminum frame, then you don't want to do the cold setting thing. Um, you can maybe try to sque squeeze the wheel in between the dropouts, but that's generally not a good solution. But the good news is that generally most of the aluminum frames are going to be newer and are probably going to be spaced out to 135 millimeters to begin with, so you're probably not going to have an issue. Okay, so I've verified that the wheels will fit the frame. The front one wasn't an issue because the, the spacing on that one is pretty standard. But the rear one was uh, questionable. But since I verified that it will fit as is, and I don't have to space the uh, rear triangle out, I'm ready to start setting these uh, wheels up. I've pulled the cassette off of the, uh, the old wheel. It's a seven-speed cassette. Now, the wrinkle is that this newer wheel here, the free hub, is spaced out for like an 8, 9, or 10 speed cassette. Now, that's not an issue because I can just put a uh, 45 millimeter spacer in there and the 7 speed cassette will fit just fine. But, I have an option here. I can update the bike to 8 or 9 speed if I want to by replacing the cassette and replacing the shifters and the, uh, maybe a new chain if I want. Um, so, I have that option. But I think for the time being, just uh, to keep the video relatively simple, I'm going to go ahead and just stay with the 7-speed drivetrain. And so I'm going to install this 7-speed uh, cassette on here. So here's the 45 millimeter spacer. Just slide this on here like this and slide the cassette on. And a little spacer, just slide that on there like this. Install the lock ring and then torque that down to about 40 newton meters with my torque wrench here. Like that. 
Now I'm ready to install the rotors. Uh, I'm wearing uh, rubber gloves here to help uh, keep my finger oils off the rotors because any oils on there can contaminate them, contaminate the pads. So, and then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the rotors using some uh, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and just kind of wipe them down, uh, especially, you know, the uh, braking surface here on the outside of the rotors there. That's the most important part. And then I can place the uh, rotor into place. Uh, there's an arrow on here pointing this way. That indicates the direction of rotation. There's also only printing on one side of this. So if there's usually, if they're printing a, on one side, that faces out. But look for the arrow for the uh, direction of rotation. So I'm just going to lay this in place. So now the rotor came with these small screws. They're uh, Torx screws, Torx 25. I've already treated them with uh, Loctite blue. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the screws into the holes but not screw them all the way down yet and then once all the screws are started go ahead and screw them down uh, all the way but loosely and then once they're all uh, screwed down go ahead and start tightening them a little bit I'm just using the loose socket the T25 socket so I'll just kind of tighten them down kind of a start pattern like here here then over here over here over here and then over here and then I'm going to torque them down using a uh, torque wrench, a beam torque wrench and right on here it says torque them down to 55 inch pounds that's inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds, so it's right here, inch pounds so well, again I'm going to tighten them down in a star pattern and I'm not going to tighten them down all the way down to 55 to begin with I maybe go halfway there go over here halfway there and again do this in the star pattern and then go around again and tighten them all the way down to uh, 55 inch pounds and so that one's installed and the other rotor is going to be installed the exact same way and so now both of the rotors are installed on the wheels. Now as I said this was going to be a process of trial and error. Well my plan was is to take this uh, bracket like this and it was going to slide on there, clamp on there and this part would be down here and I'd have the mount for my caliper like that. But I ran into a problem. After I mounted the rotor onto the wheel, I went to mount the wheel on there and what I found is the rotor comes up and hits the inside of the fork. There's just not enough clearance on the inside of this fork for the rotor to be there. So these forks are just not going to work for uh, mounting disc brakes onto, so I'm going to have to get some different forks. Now I really wanted to do the conversion using adapters front and back, but with this fork it's just not going to work. It's just not wide enough. But I looked around and I had a fork that will work. Uh, it's already set up for disc brakes. It's got the uh, mount for the caliper on here and it's wide enough to fit a wheel with a, a uh, rotor on there so that's not a problem. And the steerer is about the same length and diameter as the one on there, one one eighth. So I should be able to just pop the old fork off, pop the new one on and I'm good to go. Now I was lucky in that, that the uh, bike was set up with a one and one eighth inch steerer because there's plenty of forks available uh, that are uh, disc brake ready that have one one eight inch steerers. Now on some of the older mountain bikes, uh, most of the older ones, they're going to have one inch steerers. So if you have a suspension fork on there with a one inch steerer, that might be a roadblock for you. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find many, if any, uh, suspension forks that have one inch steerers and are uh, capable of using for disc brakes that you know that have the, the mounts for there or even wide enough to fit a wheel with a rotor. So that is going to be an obstacle for you and if that's the situation uh, you're in you may or may not be able to convert uh, but you're going to have to do a lot of research and problem solving to get around that in any case. Now before I replace the forks on the other bike I want to go over some other types of mountain bike forks you might encounter. Uh, here's some like oversized mountain bike forks, the rigid ones here. And if I go ahead and slide this wheel onto here it fits really nice. There's lots of spacing for the rotor there. There's no problem with that fitting in there. Now on this type of fork I think this kind of adapter here with the oversized clamp here would work. It would go right on here like this 
and clamp down and I think you would need probably even need a shim around there a little bit to uh, take up the space and then this part here goes to the inside there and so now you would have the uh, bracket there for the uh, the caliper and then here's another mountain bike uh, with like your classic tapered type forks and again it looks like this wheel here will fit and then there's a space in here for the rotor it's not going to hit the fork now on this taper type of fork like this, uh, you can use a similar type of adapter, it just has a smaller clamp size and it would clamp right on there and you would have your uh, bracket for your uh, disc brake caliper like that. Now one thing to be aware of is I have uh, read about and seen pictures of instances where uh, under hard disc braking, like with this kind of adapter and this kind of fork here, the fork has actually bent because it's not designed to take that kind of force like right at that point. So just be aware that that is a possibility. Now you can find these kinds of adapters on Amazon and eBay and I've seen them on eBay for literally just a few bucks. Um, I have not used them so I really don't know how well they'll work. Now one potential issue I've seen with these is the width of this little part here because when you mount them on there it fits to the inside of the fork drop out now this little part here it's about three and a half millimeters wide now if you're using a bolted on wheel it's not an issue but if you're using a wheel with quick release axle typically the axle extends out past the lock nut only four millimeters so if this is three and a half millimeters that only leaves a half a millimeter to stick into the dropout and that is not enough that is just not enough to secure the wheel safely in place now I had a potential solution now the, the hub spacing on a front wheel is 100 millimeters so that's like 100 millimeters wide from the lock nut to the lock nut and typically the front quick release axle is 108 millimeters so it leaves four millimeters of axle sticking out on either side to go into the fork dropouts. This part here was three and a half millimeters. That would only leave half a millimeter of axle sticking into the fork dropout. And like I said, that's not enough. So what I did was I bought another axle on eBay and it was listed as 110 millimeters, but when I measured it, it was actually closer to uh, 110 and a half millimeters. So what I was going to do was overhaul the hub here, replacing the axle. And so I was going to leave about three and a half millimeters over on the drive side sticking out, which figured out that would be enough. Three and a half millimeters would be sticking, uh, taken up uh, by the little part on the adapter there. And so that would leave three and a half millimeters sticking out on this side to go into the uh, fork dropout. And so I would think that would be enough. Another possible uh, solution uh, to help in that is if I put on a grinder here and gr grinded this part down just maybe a half a millimeter thinner. Um, I think it'd still be strong enough because I think the main force is going to be at the top part here. And so that would give me an extra half millimeter of axle down there. And so I think that uh, might work. So that was my plan anyway. Okay, so I'm ready to replace this fork here, so I want to remove this little top cap up here. Just take it all the way off. Loosen and remove the stem from the top of the fork steerer. And just kind of put that out of the way now. I can pull these spacers off of there. Just use my wooden mallet and knock down a little bit, push it up, and then I can remove these little uh, wedge pieces here, drop the fork down, Now I'll just slide the new fork up in place. I don't need to lube all the bearings because I overhauled this not too long ago, so they're all uh, nice and greased and ready to go. And slide these parts back on there, like this. Put the spacers back on here, like this, and I might have to remove one of these spacers there. Let's see how that does. OK, 
Okay, I'll put the little cap back on here. And tighten this down. Roughly straighten the steerer. I'll have to adjust this a little bit later. And then tighten down these little stem uh, clamp bolts. And I have a new fork. And then install the front wheel here onto the new fork. And the rotor fits just fine on this fork. Now I need to look for an adapter for the rear, and I have multiple ones to choose from. I have this uh, cheap one, I guess it was only a few bucks, and it w I think it would mount on here like this, you know, so this would clamp onto the uh, seat stay there. Uh, the, one of the issues is the angle of this, so you, you know, if it's over here, you couldn't even just easily just slide the wheel in. And you still have the issue that this is like uh, three and a half millimeters thick, and you'd only have a half millimeter of axle going into the drop out there. So you'd have to deal with that, maybe a longer axle or something. Um, I don't know, I just don't think this is maybe the best solution. Now here's another adapter I have. I don't even know what it's called. I got it on eBay and it looks like somebody maybe made it on like a, a, a CNC uh, milling machine. And um, I don't think it's going to work on this bike here because it looks like it's designed for like a horizontal drop out, like a fixie or a track bike that would slide right in there and then the axle would go through there and then you'd have the, the mount for the caliper right there. But I don't have the right kind of drop out for that so this one's not going to work for me. Now I have two other ones here. This one is made by a company called A to Z and uh, this I think will work. And then I have another one here made by a company called uh, Chaser Tech and I think this one will work as well. So these are the two that I'm going to play with. This is the A to Z bracket and after reading through the instructions I don't think this is going to be the best choice for this bike. Uh, in the instructions they mentioned uh, making sure that the planes of the uh, dropout are flat and these are not flat they're kind of textured here and a little uneven and they recommend only using an aluminum frame bike with flat dropouts. This is a steel frame and it doesn't have the flat dropouts. Now it might be possible to make it work to get it to fit on there and get everything to line up here. Uh, but I think the other bracket might be a better choice for this bike. Out of curiosity, I grabbed one of my other mountain bikes. It's a Cannondale. Uh, it's an aluminum frame with a flat drop out. So I decided to see how this adapter would fit on here. And it doesn't look like it will fit on here either. The, the holes here just won't come over and line up with the drop out there at all. Uh, it's like being blocked by this and up here. And just looks like it won't fit. So um, I've seen good recommendations of these, so I'm sure there's a lot of frames out there that these will work on, just not these frames. Well, here's the, the main body of the Chaser Tech uh, bracket here. And so this would fit onto here like this, and then this little arm comes up here and attaches onto the uh, brake stud there. Uh, so it slides on there, and then this can be adjusted out it looks like and kind of get this to line up with the drop out there and the reading through the instructions um, what they recommend uh, is drilling a, a hole into the drop out and put a screw on there to hold this there here and unfortunately that would go like uh, partly through the drop out and partly through the space between there so I think this is kind of designed again for the big fat aluminum kind of like one my uh, Cannondale but I think it might be able to make be made to fit onto this bike so I'm gonna give, give this a shot it comes with a special uh, skewer to use so like this little part here I think is designed to fit into that little spot there and so uh, let me see I'll slide this in through the wheel here and then on the other side is just a normal little uh, spring and little screw mount part here. So I'll put that on there loosely. And let's give a shot to uh, mounting the wheel here into this. Bring this up here and
So here it is mounted on here, and I think it would be easier to uh, install the, uh, t the wheel uh, if this were like bolted in place and you could just slide it right on there like that. Uh, but with it loose, it's just a little bit awkward. I, I like this brace here, uh, so when you break, that force is just going to go up there and be held in by that stud there. And then this can be adjusted here for this angle, probably help line up with that uh, dropout down there. Uh, so I, I kind of like how this uh, looks on here. Okay, some observations uh, from this angle is looking at the bracket, it looks like it's angled out a little bit at the top here uh, relative to the uh, rotor there. And so what I think is, there's a couple little eyelets down here, little uh, little screws uh, for like fender mounts and everything. Um, and I think one of them is maybe holding the uh, bracket out a little bit. I'm gonna look at that. And another thing I've noticed here is this screw here is really close to this rotor. It's not touching the rotor, uh, but it's very close to that rotor there. So that's something else I want to keep an eye on here. Well, I'm going to test fit this caliper on here to see what kind of movement I have to adjust it. Well, fiddling around with it, it looks like the bottom part of the caliper I have a lot of in and out movement, but not so much at the top. So I'm going to see if I can uh, maybe grind down this eyelet a little bit to get the top of the bracket in. I just want to make sure that uh, this little screw over here doesn't uh, get too close to the uh, rotor there. If so, then I'm going to have to maybe switch this around or something. You can't really see it from this angle, but the surface of this little eyelet here extends out past the plane of the drop out there. This one looks okay, but this one here. So I think if I just grind down the surface of this a little bit flatter, that it may be more, a little bit more in line with the plane of here and the bracket won't st stick out at the top. Well, it's much flatter now, uh, so I think uh, this might help a little bit. Let's give it a shot. Well, after grinding that eyelet down and I remounted the stuff on here, I definitely have more side-to-side -side movement on the uh, caliper. The bracket is straighter up and down. The little screw here is still uh, like two or three millimeters away from the rotor. That's close, but I think that'll be fine. Uh, so that's looking good. Okay, we're looking at the back side of the adapter bracket here. I have an axle uh, put here in the dropout, so keep the uh, dropout on the bracket lined up with the dropout on the frame. You see a little bit of a hole in the bracket there. The original intention of the manufacturers was that you were going to uh, drill a hole in the dropout, like the big uh, aluminum ones, and put a screw through that hole and screw it right into the dropout to kind of mount the bracket right to the dropout. But on this dropout here, that hole uh, would only catch uh, like a, a part of the edge of this dropout there. And with the steel dropout, there's not a lot of material there. So if I drilled a hole through there, um, it would really weaken this. So I don't want to do that. But what I have in mind to do is make a little metal plate and put it up here and screw it into these two eyelets here and then I can drill a hole through this little adapter bracket and put a screw through there and screw into this little plate there and I think that will work to hold the bracket here to the uh, frame okay I made like a little bracket here to hold the adapter on in place since I couldn't screw it directly into the dropout so all I did was took a little piece of uh, steel bar drilled a couple little holes in here uh, for the screws to go through and then I drilled a hole in the middle and tapped it out for an M6 screw and it's going to screw into these two eyelets here the two eyelets are staggered this one's in a little bit so I'm going to use a couple washers on uh, between the bracket and that one and just put this little screw in there a little bit and put this screw in here and I can always paint this black later if I really want to then I also uh, drilled an additional hole here in the adapter to line up with the uh, threaded hole in my little bracket there and 
Then I also made a couple little uh, spacers here that will fit between the bracket and the adapter and fit between these two little eyelets. What I did was I took some uh, little uh, V-brake uh, pad spacers, so sort of like the little concave ones here. I took two of them and I ground them down on the edges so that they'll fit here between these two little eyelets there. And so I have an M6 screw and so I'll put this through here put my two little uh, spacers on here like this and fit these in here between the eyelets and screw this into place like this. Now the main purpose of using this uh, little uh, bracket back here is just to kind of hold this adapter in place. So now I can just slide the wheel on and off and I'll have this falling off. So I can adjust the little lineup of the drop out there by tightening or loosening the drop out there. So I get it to where the adapter and the, the regular uh, frame drop out are lined up. And at that point, I can go ahead and tighten this down all the way. And then I want to bolt down the uh, control arm here onto the brake stud. There's a uh, brake stud sticking up beyond there. And so I can put some washers on here to fill up that empty space. I have an M6 screw here. And I'll just go ahead and tighten this down. Like that. Now I can tighten down these lock nuts on the control arm here. And uh, this one's a 12 millimeter, and this is a 10 millimeter down here. So, you see it just go ahead, tighten it that way, and tighten it that way. All set. And then there's this little screw here, which tightens down against the dropout, or in my case, it, it tightens down against the eyelet, but. I'll just go ahead and tighten that down a little bit. Now to install the wheel, I just need to pull it up into place, get it lined up here. I need to, might need to pull this out just a hair. Make sure that it gets fully seated up in there and then lock the skewer in place like that. And here it is with the wheel attached and this thing is on there. It's pretty solid and uh, I don't think it looks half bad. It looks fairly clean. And I'm still keeping an eye on this screw right here. It's uh, pretty close to the rotor. It's a couple millimeters away from that rotor, but it's not touching. But if worse comes to worse, what I can do is just pull this uh, screw out here, move this control arm to the other side here, and then put the screw in on that side. It'll just change the angle of the control arm, but that should be fine. Okay, I'm finally ready to install the calipers here. This is the front caliper. Uh, the main difference is this little bracket here. For the front, I have a zero millimeter IS bracket, uh, which is the right size of little adapter bracket to use for the front for a 160 millimeter uh, rotor there. I have these screws loose so that the caliper is free to move on there. And so I can slide right on there like that. And to make sure that you have the, the bracket installed correctly, there's an arrow on there. So as you install it, that arrow should be pointed in the direction of the wheel, wheel rotation there. Now, if you used like an, an adapter uh, mount on like a fork like this, now you're gonna have to play with what size of little adapter to use on there, because uh, it may vary. And you wanna make sure you have one so that the rotor fits on there without uh, hitting the, the outside edge there and rubbing on there, but also so that it's not so far out there, so that the pads hit right along the braking surface of the rotor there. So I'm gonna slide this on here like this, and I have the screws here. I've already put a little bit of uh, thread locker on here. So I'll get these screws started here. There's that one. And these are uh, T30 Torx screws. And I'll start this one in here. And I'm gonna screw them in so that they're all the way in, but not really tightened down. Like that. And see that the, the caliper's free to move on the rotor there. 
And so now I want to torque these two screws down to about 80 or 90 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds, or about uh, 9 to 10 Newton meters. So I have a torque wrench here, and so I'm just going to kind of turn them in turn, uh, tightening them down. And so there we are, they're all nice and torqued down. Okay, so now I have the caliper for the rear here. Uh, it's got the little uh, bracket on here. Uh, for the rear, for a 160 millimeter uh, rotor, it's just got a 20 millimeter IS bracket. Again, it's got the arrow on there to, uh, when installed, point in the direction of the rotation of the wheels. And I'm assuming that this one here is going to use like a standard size bracket for a rear it seems to fit on there well so I think that's what it is um, so I'm gonna try that I have these screws loosened so that I got play in the uh, caliper there and so again I have the screws here and they're T30, T30 torque screws and so I'll try these here and if depending on the little uh, adapter you use you may have to play with the size of the little uh, adapter bracket on the caliper and so I'll tighten these screws in here and make sure the wheel turns okay it's not dragging against the rotor like on the outside so it's not bottoming out or anything like that and there is play there so that looks good and so I want to torque these down and these need to be torqued down to about uh, 40 to 60 inch pounds or about uh, 5 to 7 Newton meters and so I have my torque wrench uh, set up here so I'll tighten them a little bit each at a time And so those are tightened. Okay, so now I'm ready to start hooking up the cables. I need to cut a new cable housing that goes all the way from here around down to the uh, little fork bridge here, down around behind there, and down to the, uh, the caliper there. And so I'm going to run the cable here from the caliper side around to the inside of the fork, and then up to the uh, brake here like this and try to get a rough distance here and uh, you see because this will be zip tied to right there and then right to there so I'll go ahead and cut the cable right here and then test fit it again kind of run up here into there and then into the caliper here, around there, and it'll be zip tied there, and that actually looks pretty good. And then I'll take it all and kind of poke it into the end of the cable to open up the lining there, and stick a ferrule on. And same thing with the other side. And poke, put a ferrule on there. Now I guess I should go over the brake levers here. Um, these are mechanical disc brakes and so they need long pull or linear pull brake levers. Uh, these brake levers here are for V brakes which are also long pull or, or linear pull and they'll work fine with mechanical disc brakes. Now if uh, you had brake levers that are designed for uh, cantilever brakes, those are like short pull and so they're not going to work right with the with the uh, disc brakes so you're going to need to replace those and if your shifters and brake levers are integrated at that point then you're going to probably need to replace your shift levers as well but since these uh, brake levers here are already uh, made for V brakes they're not going to be any problem here I can use these just fine so I'm going to go ahead and pull this cable out of here line up these little slots over here in the uh, little barrel adjuster here pull this cable through here and pull this cable out there 
and then install a brand new cable here, get it into the slot, and over there, and then I can uh, just turn these around a little bit so that that slot's not lined up there. And then insert the cable into the new cable housing. And get it all nice and seated. And route it around here. And so now I can route this uh, cable here It'll go to the outside of this fork bridge, around the outside of this brake stud here, to the inside of the fork, and then I can run the cable down here through the barrel adjuster on the caliper, and pull the cable down through, and then get the cable housing all seated into the barrel adjuster like that. And now I can run the cable down here through this little cable clamp on the caliper and pull the cable through and I have this barrel adjuster turned all the way down and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this cable taut and I don't want to have it so it's pulling the uh, the brake closed at all I, I just want to have the cable so that there's no slack in the cable there and when there's no slack in the cable I'll go ahead and tighten the cable clamp down now I can torque this down to about 40 to 60 inch pounds. I have my torque wrench set to about 50. And so just go ahead and tighten this. And so there it is like that. Now this next part is kind of hard to see. If you look down in here, you can see the rotor going through the caliper. What I want to do is adjust this little dial over here so that it moves the pad on this side out. So it just touches the side of the rotor at the point where the rotor is right in the middle of that slot uh, in the caliper. So what I want to do is I can either just rotate this dial or I can use a Torx wrench in here and then just kind of turn this here and as I turn this clockwise the pad will come out like this and so I'll just slide down there and look and I can, I can even pull the lever to kind of see where it goes there and that actually looks pretty good right at that point right there maybe just back it out just a little bit like right there uh, yeah like that now I'm ready to lock the uh, caliper into place and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze the brake lever which will extend the pads out and position the caliper just straight with the rotor because the both the pads are out and, and locked down and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this bolt and this bolt down and it's a uh, T30 Torx so I'm just going to kind of tighten them down uh, sort of tight now and now I'm going to use my torque wrench and tighten them down to about 70 to 90 inch pounds and tighten them in turn And so that's all there. Now it's possible that this uh, inside pad here might be dragging a little bit. And so what I want to do is loosen this uh, little dial over here just like a click or two. And check to see if it's dragging. If it's still dragging then I'll go ahead and loosen another click or two. But it seems to be working pretty well right now. I'll test the brake. Boom. Boom. Working pretty well. Yeah, so now I want to trim this cable, this uh, skewer little lever's in the way. So what I'll do is pull that out. I want to trim it down to about uh, 20, eh, about 25 millimeters there. And so now uh, install a crimp end on here so the cable doesn't uh, fray, poke anybody. And then I got some pliers and I'll just go ahead and crimp this on here like this. Then lock the wheel back into place. And all done with the front. And so now I need to cut cable housings for the rear brake. This piece of cable housing here that goes from the brake lever down to the cable stop. Uh, this cable housing is less than six months old, so I'm, I'm not going to bother replacing it. If it was like a year or two old, I'd go ahead and replace it and just cut a new piece this exact same length. But I'll go ahead and reuse this. 
I do, however, need to cut a new piece of cable housing to go from this cable stop down to the uh, caliper there. And I'm not quite sure exactly how I'm going to route this here. So it's going to go there. And so maybe then I'll tie it down here and have it go up here. I need to make sure that this has like enough, uh, you know, I, want, I don't want to have it too tight there. But actually that looks like it pretty good because this is the part that moves there. So if I do this and I can tie it down here and cut it there. So I think that will work. So I'll cut it right there. Check the ends, make sure that they're all nice and clean. Pull this little bit off here and just kind of test fit it in here like this. And it would be tied down here with zip ties, kind of like this. Uh, maybe just a hair, just a hair shorter. this and I think that looks pretty good like that and then I'll open up the lining in the cable with my awl at both ends and inst uh, install ferrules on each end just like this and kind of just slide this in the place for the moment so now I need to remove the old brake cable from the brake lever here. So I'll line up the, the slots in the uh, little barrel adjuster here with the slot in the lever. Pull the cable out. Pull the old cable out. Install the new cable. Run it through the slot there. And then I can turn the barrel adjuster in like this. And then run the cable into the cable housing. And pull it through. So the cable housing is seated into the brake lever, like that. And then I'm going to run the cable into this cable housing, push it in, run it all the way down to the brake. Uh, so it comes through there, and I'll get this cable housing seated into that cable stop. And then I can run the cable down through the barrel adjuster here, make sure this barrel adjuster is turned all the way in. and get this cable housing seated into the cable stop there. And so now I want to run the cable down here through the little cable clamp on the caliper here and pull it so uh, it's taut, but not actually pulling that like that. Uh, if I tighten it down and there's still a little bit of slack, I can always uh, take this little barrel adjuster here and turn it out to remove any slack. Uh, and then I'll tighten down the screw, which is a T30 Torx. And then tighten this screw down to about 40 to 60 inch pounds. Like that. And then again, I want to adjust this little dial here so the pad comes out and touches the caliper or the rotor while it's in about the uh, center of that little slot. Turn this little dial out here and kind of sight down through there and see that uh, come out. That looks like about right. Now I want to lock down the caliper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in the uh, brake lever and hold it. And so while the uh, little brake uh, pads in there are locked down onto the rotor, I'm going to tighten these screws here with a T30 screwdriver. And then I'm going to torque them down to about 70 to 90 inch pounds. I have my torque wrench set to about 80 inch pounds. And then I'm going to back this little dial out like just a couple clicks at least to three. And then as far as I need to do so that it's not dragging on the rotor. And it seems to be okay. That looks pretty good. 
and then I'll go ahead and cut this cable down to about 20 25 millimeters long and then I'll get a crimp end on here so it doesn't fray and crimp it on the there are some pliers here there and done with the rear brake okay I'm almost done here so now just kind of do a little bit of a cleanup and everything I got a zip tie I'm gonna zip tie the uh, cable here to the fork bridge. I have it routed to the outside of the little stud there. Trim the zip tie like that. And then I'll get a couple zip ties back here. Kind of get the cable out of the way here. One there. And one down here. This. And then trim these little ends off here. And I can move these out of the way here so you don't get scratched on them. And now to deal with the brake studs here. I took the wheel off so you can see them better. But you have some different options of what you could do with these. One, you can just leave them as is. Two, you can cover them up. They make these like little uh, plastic little covers and they'll snap right over there. And so one, they keep uh, you know from anybody from being stabbed on there, you know, or it just also keeps them clean so that if you decide you want to use those brake studs later, they're there. Now another option is uh, in some cases they can be removable. Uh, look for little wrench flats on here, uh, and so a lot of times, especially if in like an aluminum frame or aluminum forks, uh, you'll have the steel studs. Very often they're going to be uh, screwed in, and you can remove them. Now, usually the flats are around eight millimeter, and so I have like a little eight millimeter wrench here. But the problem is that very often these can be tight, and I've, I've seen with using like an eight millimeter wrench, you try to do that, and more often than not, it's just going to round the uh, edges off of there and uh, just kind of really wreck it up a little bit. Another option is you can use vice grips. And you get on there, but again, it mars up the edges and stuff. So I actually found a really cool tool here uh, from Craftsman. It's like an adjustable wrench, but it's like a combination vice grip adjustable wrench here. And this is the perfect tool for these because you can use this like an adjustable wrench, clamp down on the flats here, and get it all adjusted down nice like this. And then use this vice grip part here to clamp down and so now it's going to hold on really nicely tight and then you can rotate this around and unscrew the post and same with the other one clamp it on there and unscrew it and got the set off without marring up all the little edges there and they make little plugs that will screw into these holes to cover them up I don't have the right size these are a larger size so there's like two different sizes and uh, so I don't have the right size but I'll, I'll go ahead and get some and I'll screw those in there and cover up those holes now for the back ones I'm using the one stud for the uh, control arm for the brake adapter there and uh, so I only have the one uh, little stud to worry about and it does not have flats so I'm pretty sure it's like brazed in so I'm just gonna go ahead and cover that one up okay done installing the brakes let's take it out for a test ride well the test ride went great I did multiple passes testing the front brake the rear brake easy braking hard braking locking them up I got a little bit of video of the rear brake locking it up the adapter held great uh, I call it success so here you go a vintage mountain bike converted to disc brakes now keep in mind that every bike is going to be different you may have to use different adapters adjust it differently set them up differently some might not be able to be converted to disc brakes for whatever reason but I try to give you a lot of different options and you're just gonna have to play with it experiment and see what works and what doesn't uh, that being said please don't message me asking me how your particular bike needs to be set up you're just gonna have to play with it 
that's why I gave you a lot of different options and pointers in this video. So hopefully those help. Um, anyway, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Hopefully you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button. These new videos that come out. I'm always coming out with new videos. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page. I post a ton of stuff over there. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go over there, sign up for the page, and I have stuff over there as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.